Amid fears of a wider war in West Asia, U.S. President Joe Biden is hopeful that Iran will stand down and not intensify the conflict. Tensions have soared since Iran vowed to avenge the assassinations of Hezbollah military commander Fouad Shukra and Hamas's political chief Ismail Haniyeh when asked if he thinks that Iran will now stand down. Biden replied that he hopes so but does not know. Do you think Iran will stand down? Do you think Iran will stand down, sir? As part of steps to mitigate the possibility of regional escalation by Iran or Iran's proxies, U.S. CENTCOM Chief General Michael Kurula has arrived in West Asia. This visit comes after Pentagon's announcement that it would move a fighter jet squadron to West Asia and maintain an aircraft carrier in the region. According to U.S. officials, Kurala is expected to visit several Gulf countries, Jordan and Israel. His trip to the region was planned before the recent escalation between Israel, Iran and Hezbollah. But according to officials, Kurala is expected to use the trip to try to mobilize the same coalition that defended Israel against an Iranian attack on April 13th. Jordan will be a key stop as it played a significant role during the attack. Jordan intercepted Iranian drones that entered their territory headed for Israel. It also allowed U.S. and Israeli just to use their airspace to intercept the Iranian drones. Amid boosted efforts to brace for an escalation, cross-border fire between Israel and Hezbollah has intensified. In the latest, Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system went into action in the wee hours of Sunday, intercepting a barrage of rockets fired by Hezbollah. A wave of rockets was fired near the border about 25 minutes after midnight. According to Israeli media, dozens of rockets had been fired from Lebanon into Israel. Hezbollah has said it launched dozens of Katyusha rockets at Beit Hillel in northern Israel. The Iran-backed group has claimed that it has its latest attack was in response to Israel's attacks on Kafar Keller and Deir Serian in Lebanon. Hezbollah says that Israeli attack injured civilians there. But IDF says it struck Hezbollah terror targets in Kafar Keller, including terrorist infrastructure and military structures. The military has also claimed that earlier in the day, an Israeli aircraft eliminated a Hezbollah terrorist in Deir Serian. This comes after Iran said that it expects Hezbollah group to strike deep inside Israeli territory and not limit its attacks just to military targets. Iran is expecting the Lebanese group to increase its intensity of attacks on Israel. After the assassinations of Hezbollah military commander Fuad Shukr and Hamas's political chief Ismail Haniyeh, Israel's military says it is on high alert against the anticipated response. We are now being joined by Brigadier General Retired Elias Farhat from Beirut. He is a strategic and military researcher. Mr. Farhat, how do you view the latest escalation between Hezbollah and Israel, given the fact that tensions have soared in West Asia since the assassinations of uh, Hezbollah military commander Fuad Shukr and Hamas's political chief Ismail Haniyeh? <laughs> Mr. Farad, is my voice reaching out to you? Can you? Mr. Farad, how do you view the latest escalations between Hezbollah and Israel? Yes, it is not only between Hezbollah and Israel. It's between the Palestinian people and the Palestinian resistance in Gaza and in the West Bank and the Jerusalem against the Israeli occupation. There is an occupation and uh, there is... Uh, people, there are people under the, this occupation. They are resisting since 75 years. It's not nothing new. It's not uh, new. It's not a, a new conflict. It's not uh, something that uh, uh, they, they are uh, intervening uh, suddenly. Uh, now, your question about Hezbollah and Israel. Uh, Hezbollah is a Lebanese resistance that. Um, was able to drive out the Israeli occupation uh, in, in 2000 uh, 
from the Lebanese uh, uh, occupied territories and uh, uh, Hezbollah confronted an Israeli invasion in 2006 and uh, permitted the Israel okay. of occupying other lands in Lebanon. Now the current situation now that uh, Israel uh, assassinated one of the leaders of Hezbollah in Beirut. Uh, so the, the Hezbollah will retaliate where and when and who, we don't know yet. Mr. Farad, U.S. President Joe Biden says he's still hopeful that Iran would stand down and not in intensify the conflict. You know, what are the chances of that happening in view of what's happening right now? Mr. Biden uh, forgot that uh, when Al-Qaeda, which were the majority Saudis, uh, bombed the in, uh, attack in New York and Washington, he invaded Afghanistan uh, as a response. So he, don't, he doesn't want Iran to respond uh, to this, uh, I mean, to, to this breach of its uh, national security and its dignity by assassinating a, a official guest in, in the country. I don't think that the, uh, this has a sense in terms of uh, sovereignty of states. Okay. How do you also view U.S. CENTCOM Chief General Michael Kurula's visit to the region? Do you think he can mobilize the same international and regional coalition of countries that defended Israel from previous attacks? I think uh, the United States uh, um, has an alternative to join Israel in, the, in its operations. And uh, this is something uh, uh, will lead to a regional war. And you know, you know what being regional war means that the closure of the uh, Hermes Sea and the rise of the uh, oil to 200 or 250 dollars uh, and also the, the, that will lead to the destroyal the destruction of uh, the uh, oil uh, and gas fields and of the uh, the Palestinian coast uh, and uh, the, the creation of a crisis of flow of uh, gas to Europe uh, that means many things also it will add to the closure of uh, Bab okay. al mandeb uh, that will, this is the regional war which now the United States is trying to uh, uh, to avoid, but without any uh, any offer to uh, compensate Iran about this breach, this breach or compens compensate Lebanon. Just only uh, you, you were attacked, you were killed, and you have to uh, to step down and don't do anything. If we look at the tensions in West Asia between. Hezbollah and Israel, Iran and Israel as well. You know, the United States is boosting its forces right now in West Asia, sending warships and fighter jets to the region. As you said earlier, do you fear of a wider escalation? Yes, uh, the, 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 the people in Iran and Israel, they no more are afraid of, of the United States and of the, uh, I mean, the, the fleets and the uh, airplane carriers and their destroyers. It's a war. You know, you know that in 1983, the United States landed its forces in Lebanon and brought the task force on the airplane carrier. And then they withdrew from Lebanon under the attacks of the resistance. And uh, now I think uh, the resistance is more uh, developed and more equipped. And uh, they can uh, even uh, uh, with this, uh, uh, this imbalance between United States and Israel from one side and the resistance of the other side. There is a great gap in the technical abilities, but there is the will to uh, resist the United States and to, uh, as well as resisting Israel. Uh, Mr. Farad, interestingly, President Biden, in a tough call to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, reportedly demanded him to stop escalating tensions in the regions and move immediately towards a Gaza hostage and ceasefire deal that can, have, in fact, lead to peace in the region. You know, what's at stake for the future of both the United States and Israel in the region? I don't think that they are serious in uh, moving between a swap of prisoners between Israel and, the, and Hamas. Uh, just they are, uh, I mean, the, the, the deceiving the, uh, the other side and they are planning for more uh, actions like the assassination of Mr. Hani in Tehran and the assassination of the Hezbollah leader in Beirut. And uh, uh, nobody will, uh, no more we trust, no more the people here trust the United States. 
if they are uh, part of the mediator and they, they know that the, <laughs> the mediator, I mean, the other side of the negotiations, Mr. Habi, Mr. Hani, will be assassinated. That means they, they assassinated the negotiations. So what, what, what they negotiate with whom? Appreciate you joining us on the broadcast, Brigadier General Elias Faraz. Thank you so much. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.